Um, okay, so hello everyone. Can you hear me fine from there? Yes? <laughs> okay, so welcome to my panel with a really weird title. We're going to be talking about character design for video games and manga and stuff like that. And I was asked to aim it at male character design, specifically kind of fan service designs. So I hope you will enjoy it because it's kind of awkward for me to talk about this for so many people, but I hope it will be fun. And you're super welcome to participate and ask questions whenever. So it would be really fun if you would uh, raise your hand and, and say whatever you want, okay? So who am I? Who's this person talking about drawing sexy guys in here? <laughs> I'm Helion White, and I've worked for the video game industry for around six years or so, professionally. And uh, some of my works include okay, some really Asian titles like Epic Summoners, Clone Evolution, Castle of Clash, or Clash of Castles, and they all really have different, uh, super similar names, I mean. And I usually work as an illustrator and character designer for those games. I've also worked in more indie titles like Golden Arcana or a couple more, usually in Spain for these sort of titles. And in this one, uh, I was uh, also the art director and the lead artist. So these are my babies and I wish the game gets a continuation someday. I hope it will. Uh, I've also worked in manga, but I can't talk about the manga uh, because it hasn't been released yet or announced. So maybe I will. And this is my own personal project, Pulse of Berry, which I hope to release this year. And we will be using some examples from the characters in here since I try to make very fun service male guys in here. So I hope you will enjoy that. We will see some later. So. Uh, when I was told to come here and make a panel, I thought it would be about my experience in the video game industry. Uh, but the girl who told me to come here was apparently more interested in me talking about how I draw uh, these sort of illustrations. So it's really embarrassing, but apparently, I don't know. One day, my Twitter account started getting full of really horny comments in my pictures like this. So I was like, well, okay, I guess I'm known for this now, uh, uh, let's do it. So the reason why I really enjoy talking about um, character designs and their limitations is because they really are extremely limited. Like when you work for a big audience, you usually get censored in every single sense. I mean, this character, for example, is extremely simple. He's really old, so don't pay attention. It's not a great design or anything, but if you look at how he has no sleeves, uh, when I was a small, this one got really criticized and my high school mates usually just were like, oh, that's so gay. And I was like, is that a bad thing? Or I didn't get it when I was a small. I didn't know what they were criticizing it for. But when I was a small, I was like, oh, okay, I will cover him up. I will give him lots of armor. I will give him long trousers and like really simple stuff. And I did that for a couple of years, and I wasn't having fun with it at all. And I was always wondering, like, why can't I design a character with a long skirt? Or why can't I make a character, a male character, wear high heels, for example? Because we get so many females like wearing a level 80 bikini armor, right? So we are super used to that. But when it comes to guys, they get really criticized and, like, when they wear anything that's not super functional or super buff, they usually will get like, they usually get the typical gay scream, like if it was a bad thing or something. And I've always been super mad at those sort of things because why do they have to get categorized so easily when we are so used to seeing women in so many points? So, uh, well, this, this panel won't be about feminism and all those things. It could, but it could be super long, so. <laughs> Not for today. So the thing is, because I found male designs uh, so infuriating to make when I worked for companies and such, I was like, OK, I will make whatever I want in my own manga and just work from there. And at first, I thought it would be very not well received at all. But I got the surprise. So that's really nice. I guess things are changing. 
So those are some of the first designs I made for some random characters in the background in the manga. And as you can see, instead of uh, tensoring the girls, what I did was kind of the opposite. I was like, I'm going to make the guys wear super usually feminine outfits as well. Like, you get a whole corset there, you, had, you get the high stilettos as well, and full-blown skirts with frills and such. And so my challenge has always been to make uh, male characters that aren't like taking a super feminine and such. Because, for example, I always test these sort of designs with my brother and my father. <laughs> and my brother criticizes absolutely everything that doesn't wear a super huge, uh, bulky armor. But my father was like, oh, that's a cool guy. And I was like, yes, that's where I want to get. That's the reaction I want to get. And not the gay thing, which is super annoying all the time. And by making details like, let me zoom in Do it real fast. Those sort of details are being used uh, a lot more lately in games like Grand Blue Fantasy or Fate Go as well. I'm sure the name is familiar to many of you. Like just the fact of having bare backs and stuff like that. It's usually very frowned upon, usually more in a Western side of the video game uh, community. So I'm really happy that uh, lately more artists are beginning to make these sort of designs and it's getting out of the sort of fetish side of the things because it isn't as criticized anymore. So yeah, mainly all of this comes because of frustration of not being able to add many clothing elements to characters that I really enjoy. Okay. Like, oh wait, um, for example, this is one of the illustrations I made for Epic Summoners. Like I said, it's an Asian game, like super Chinese and such. I don't think it's ever come out here, so I'm sure no one will know it, but <laughs> there it is. So as you can see, the guy here, well, I don't know if you can see it very clearly in this screen, but I don't know if you can tell. He's supposed to be wearing a super torn uh, armor and such because he's in the middle of battle and all those things. So when I presented the first sketch for this one, I also added a big scratch on the back, and so it was showing his bare back a little bit. And it was outrageous in the company because they were like, no, 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 that's too sexy. You can't have a guy like that. And it was like, it's a warrior with just a little bit of back showing. So I had to completely redesign his back. And well, I had to cover it. As you can see, this is the end result. I mean, it is OK. <laughs> But he was supposed to be wearing like super tight, you know, like the skin tight outfits you usually get in, in girls that you can see all the muscles for. They censored it right away in this, in this one. Out of fear, it would, uh, it would get rejected or reported in the Google store, which is like, wow, really? Because if we look, sorry, at his colleague right there, <laughs> it's like, shouldn't that be? a little bit more problematic for a younger audience. So why is the back getting censored? So <laughs> yeah, so the thing is, you must be super careful when publishing these things, because most companies uh, don't really dare to let you do those things for males. And for girls, it's usually the complete opposite. I mean, I'm sure so many of you already know of this, but like, dude, She's naked. <laughs> and I got so much trouble even for that guy over there because his sort of scared was flying. They were like, maybe you could cover it because it might be too suggestive. And I was like, with that guy, in the, with that girl in the front? What? But well, in the end, it isn't really, oh my god, I'm sorry for the weird message I'm getting all the time. <laughs> Uh, in the end, it really isn't as much as uh, each individual company or our director's uh, fault because it's a super globalized thing, so I'm not blaming anyone here. It's just I thought it would be fun to, to tell you about this. So with all these sort of things in mind, I remember coming home after handing it in this illustration and the other one with the ninja. And I was rambling about this to my boyfriend for a long while, like, why did they censor this? I don't get it. And so we were playing Nier Automata at the time, and if you know the commander in there, you never 
know if he's wearing any underwear at all, right? So it's kind of a super fun service design. So I was like, I will design my own as well in guy version, and you will never know what he's wearing below. <laughs> and yeah, so th those sort of designs I try to incorporate as well, which is kind of embarrassing to admit why I do them, but like I channel all my, all my anger at this topic and try to make super flashy designs and super, yeah, like all the stars, all the transparent bits and all those things, always taking into account that I don't want them to look like, like they're wearing a costume as much as, they, as I want to define a specific aesthetic with this whole shiny, super kind of sexy thing, I guess. So it wasn't really me wanting to design sexy males and such. It was just me trying to apply things that we are extremely used to seeing in female characters to male ones. OK, so after seeing all these examples and such, oh, if you have any questions or any comments at any point, please just raise your hand. I would love to be able to talk to you. OK. So we've talked a bit about all this stuff. And now I wanted to ask what really defines what fan service is. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Hello. Um, do you think there is some part of the industry uh, that, how to say it, um, wants exactly what you're making, the more sexy looking male characters. Is there a specific part of the comp uh, of the any industry that just says, yes, we want this? Uh, I w that's an interesting question. And I would say definitely yes, which is a really nice surprise I found. Because at first, I was extremely scared of even publishing this to my followers and such. I thought it would get rejected, or people would be like, why are you drawing these things and such? But I found out the complete opposite. People really, really want to see stories with uh, those sort of designs, uh, especially because I think women in general are usually very tired of those sort of things being applied only to female characters. So I see them as extremely supportive. And yeah, yeah I found a really big community that really criticizes the lack of those sort of designs because, uh, uh, one second. <laughs> And for example, in video games like Blade and Soul, I don't know if Blade, I will write it. Blade and Soul. OK, so like, you know how in online games uh, you get the same set of armor, and the girls get it with a bikini, and the guys get a full blown armor, and sometimes you want the opposite, right? So it happens in so many. So in games like this one, you usually get the complete same for girls and for guys. And no matter how fun service the female version is, you usually get the same parts showing for guys. And I remember when I played this, people were so happy about that. Like I saw guys being like, look at how sexy these two meters tall uh, male is. And I was so happy to find that because it's really hard to be able to, to, be, to, be able to get it published. But I think the community really goes around all the places you see it in because it's so rare right now. More of an indie community for now, I would say, but yeah, I think there's definitely lots of public for it. Uh, I wanted to ask about your experience uh, with working with Chinese client because like, it's not unusual for uh, game companies and such outsourcing the work to China, yeah. but it's not very usual or, or so I thought for foreigners to work on Chinese games. How did you get to work with them? Is it like, did they notice you on our station or something? Uh, so, sometimes I've gotten uh, contacted uh, directly from our station or even DeviantArt, though I never checked DeviantArt, so I can talk about that too much. But yeah, Art Station is a really good way to get found by those bigger giant companies that will contact you and suddenly outsource you to a thousand different Chinese games. Um, but uh, this is a specific one, Epic Summoners. I worked via a Spanish company that does illustrations for other companies outside. So it's only the promotional illustrations and redesigns for characters and stuff like that. So I was in charge of most of the stuff there. But 
I never got to contact the actual Chinese company uh, directly that much. Yeah, there's usually uh, someone in the middle or stuff, but it was a very specific case because usually uh, they were working on bringing Asian stuff to a Western audience. And in my case, it was the opposite. I was taking uh, the Western stuff and making it to the Eastern audience. So it was a bit of a weird case. But yeah, ArtStation definitely is a great platform for this if you're interested in, in working with those sort of companies. Okay. Anything else for that? OK. So what makes a fan service, right? It's always a question because we are seeing uh, constantly so many edgy shows and such. And we are so used to the question, but we don't, sometimes people don't really think what makes it. Uh, sometimes we see a design that's super well-dressed and like maybe with even a t-shirt and like a suit and so, stuff like that. And it's not fan service, right? When you think of it, you're like, oh, it's covered. I don't think it can be fan service. But usually what makes it is the pose. Like you can make a super naked, uh, let's take it into account, for example. For example, that design over there, he's standing very plain, just like this, holding a cane, right? I mean, you can say the outfit is fan service, but the rest isn't really. Like, it's not made with the purpose of being sexualized. I mean, it is sexualized, but it's not sexual per se, uh, the picture by itself. Whereas if I made it in another pose, like a more suggestive one, like showing the cleavage or like the, the I don't know how to call those openings there, but like, they could be falling on one side and all those things. That would definitely be fun service. And you can apply that to even the most huge armor and stuff. The problem is we only see it applied to girls. Like, so if I tell you to think of a mage, a mage, uh, a mage girl, you're probably thinking a thousand different poses. And probably one of you is thinking of them wearing a, a sort of bikini, skin tight and such. Other person is going to be thinking a super nice long dress, right? But if I tell you to think of a mage, you're all probably thinking of the typical pose like this, where he's casting a spell and being practical. <laughs> I like your way of thinking if you're not thinking exactly of that. Uh, so the thing is, that's the point. If you see a guy doing one of those poses, it's usually very shocking. So for example, if we here is a fun part where I actually begin drawing life. <laughs> so if we see a guy, usually when you have to do concept art and quick concept art, you get certain things expected of you because you are supposed to recognize the silhouettes really fast, right? So usually for guys, any pose ever in any concept art ever, when you are designing an outfit, it will be something like super plain, like just standing there, right? I've never drawn standing up, so excuse me. <laughs> OK, this is really fast, but I hope you get the idea, right? And like maybe if we've said he's a mage, he's going to be doing like something like this, and they're going to have some fire over here. And at most, he's going to be posing kind of confident. It's, it's what we are used to. So usually, in most cases, we will go from here and offer the client a couple of variations with this, and then uh, place, the, place the outfit on top. But for girls, <laughs> like usual, we are used to so many different poses. Like maybe they are standing with their shoulders like a bit to the side or something like that. And they usually look either a lot more sassy and like they are posing for a magazine, right? Like it could be something like this, for example. And instead of just posing there like, hey, here I'm holding my fireball, you're like, I'm here holding my fireball wine and then I don't know what I'm going to do with you, right? It's always those sort of things. Uh, of course, I'm, my experience is with more Asian titles, OK, so please have that into account more JRPG stuff. <laughs> I forgot to say that in the beginning. So you usually get more stuff like this. And you see both. Uh, they are very basic poses, but 
you're more used to that. If we did the left one for a guy, I am sure it would get denied in so many companies right away. Like, where are you making him so gay? People are going to think he's very weird. So the thing is, in little things like those, we can incorporate more sexier aspects that we are not used to seeing in guys so much. And I think it's definitely something super fun to experiment with. Like, for example, uh, another very typical pose that when you have to work on a whole illustration in like three hours, everyone goes to this pose because it always looks flashy. Like the whole, I'm casting something here in the air while I'm looking the other way, and I'm locking my hips like this, and I'm raising one leg over here. <laughs> it's extremely typical, like you get it everywhere. And that way, like, you get to show the important bits, which is <laughs> If we got the same for a guy, they would be like, what is that pose? It's so completely ridiculous. Why, why are you drawing that? And the thing is, yes, it's extremely ridiculous. It makes no sense that someone would attack like that. So guys are always in more practical. And let's erase this thing here. <laughs> And so I always try to fight that a lot, not by not doing it with the girls, but with doing it with the guys. Like, now you're seeing why this is so weird and why it's so ridiculous to include those sort of stuff. So when we talk about drawing girls, we all know perfectly uh, what we should be doing for fan service. Like, you have the two very important parts that everyone wants, and you can, like, play with them in different sizes, and it always works, because there's always audience for that stuff. But with guys, it's always like, what should I be emphasizing? Because what are people going to be interested in, since we are not used to seeing it at all? So usually, oh, wait. Well, that message. <laughs> Because usually we are not used to seeing these sort of poses. This is just an anatomy practice sketch session, OK? <laughs> uh, we are not used to seeing these sort of poses anywhere. And when they are seen, you don't usually get them published at all. So it's more like, I'm sure you all follow a couple of those artists that draw the sexy men on Twitter or on Tumblr or stuff like that. And you have them categorized as so instead of just the artist that draws well or something like that. And usually, it never gets out of really small circles. So, but on the other hand, if we see uh, promotional images for many games, you will see those policies all the time for girls. So, all I'm saying is, they exist for guys as well. <laughs> so, about the parts, um, let me check the time real quick. OK, so we were talking, for example, about the whole mage image thing. We get the same for, for example, if I said a warrior. If I say a warrior wielding a giant axe, I'm sure there's a thousand different images of that for a female warrior wielding an axe. But if it's a guy, it's usually super bulky, right? Like, we are used to God of War kind of guys wearing super big armor. So it's usually like super bulky, and they will be wielding their huge armor. I'm going to sit down again. <laughs> yeah, so usually get the practical side with them, unlike the super bara stuff. But you don't get skinny guys or stuff like that because it's not the usual thing or it doesn't make sense to make someone like that wear something huge. Oh, by the way, yeah, if you want to say anything at any point, please go on. <laughs> and for the girls, we usually get a thousand shapes. Like, you could have the tiny lolly that's wielding a giant thing on her back and she's like super jumpy 
I'm like super happy to be having a super huge axe that she can wield with, with one hand. And then she's probably going to be wearing a mini skirt. And she's like, yay, I have super big weapons. I forgot to add the feet, oh my god. <laughs> Like, this is very typical, but you can also get the super huge orc kind of girl, which is a little bit more bulky. But usually, if they are bulkier or more realistic, there's also going to be a ton of other weird things that, like I've been saying, you don't get with, with guys. So even in the bulkier cases, you don't see them at all in, um, in mainstream titles, right? So even if you make muscle, muscles and such, you don't see them in the end results. So usually, because, I mean, uh, how many of you here work in the game industry or want to begin working in it as character designers, for example? If you can raise your hand. Oh, ah, that's super nice. OK. Uh, so. Um, and how many of you are beginning to draw or just in general drawing but not so aimed at it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I see there's quite a few aimed at character design. Okay. Yeah, um, I was going to talk a bit about the whole, how do we, I mean, whole anatomy aspect and because I'm in the artist alley up there and I've been asked a lot of times already how I go about practicing anatomy and poses and all those things. So what I usually do is I take really light sessions of 30 second poses or so, and I try to sketch a, a thousand poses, like stuff like this, for example. And I always try to do those things like emphasizing uh, lots of the, the muscles and the main muscles, because we don't want to spend too much time on detailing everything. And then when I go from here, because I always want to practice more character design, I usually go around and try to dress them all together in the same page. So it looks like super messy to do those. But then when I get a request to, for example, uh, I don't know, design a warrior, a mage, whatever, you know, the typical classes. I can go to any of these and say, hey, I liked mm, the cape I added in that one sketch. I, I like that other part. And you can kind of create a monster design in like 10 seconds, because you've practiced a lot in that sense. And for example, and this is something funny, because these poses here, uh, there's a website called Pose Maniacs, in which you get the 30 second exercise thing, and you get super random poses thrown at you, and you must, uh, you must complete each of them in 30 seconds, which is super fast, but it's really fun to try. I encourage you all to try it. And as you can see, this is the problem I was talking about, because if you pay attention to the male poses, they are super bland or super like, I am super powerful, and that's it. Like this one is doing this sort of pose with a sword, and that's it. But look at this one right here, for example, because it's okay. I don't know if you can see it because I see that the, the screen so light from here. Uh, this is another example of just a powerful male pose and such, and the females have all the all the cool sexy poses, but you can't find them in the male in the male models. So it's up to you to practice on your own because you don't find those anywhere. Okay, so back to the whole what are the usual things to emphasize when you're drawing a guy and you want to add those more feminine aspects of of these signs. Well usually I'm going to sit down again. <laughs> Um, usually, one of the easiest parts, of course, is the upper torso, because anything below that, uh, skirts, are kind of weird to find unless you're working on a fantasy game, right? Like, it's not so usual now unless you go hardcore into Harajuku fashion or the likes, 
to see get, uh, to see guys wearing uh, skirts or at least fashionable skirts because you usually get the typical just very plain black one with boots and kind of the more goth aesthetic. But if you want to go super fancy like with frills or with complicated designs or with colorful stuff, you are not going to find that too much. So it's always more risky to try to hand that in to clients. And the easiest part to kind of smooth it in there, if you want to work with more fan service designs for guys, is to begin with the upper torso. So the easiest part, despite what I said before about the back of the ninja getting censored, is usually the back. Because uh, since you don't get to see the back that much when you draw a character, since Usually, even in, in MOBAs, no matter the genre, you're usually watching the front. You can usually go kind of crazy with the backs, which is kind of, uh, I find it super fun. But it's also kind of hard to draw in the beginning, because like, where do I place everything? And so you can even work with some sort of hourglass uh, figure for guys, because you're usually told that guys are like this, with the head over here. And it's like, why? And no one really ever tells you that guys can have hips as well. So you can kind of cut it here. And it's OK. It will definitely work. Like, it's OK to make um, yeah, those sort of more fan service guys, <laughs> since it's what this panel is about. <laughs> OK, so. You have all this part right here that you can very easily emphasize with almost any single outfit. Because you can make a skin tight outfit, or you can make a kind of bareback that gets censored a bit more because it's not so well seen. But since you can cover absolutely everything with, with a huge cape, it's always OK to go crazy with the back part, right? So yeah, it definitely is the easiest to emphasize. Let me drag that here. And it's a very good way to practice drawing all these muscles in the arms that twist and go around and are so annoying to work with. So from the back, we can also talk about uh, something that's uh, very used in designs, which is uh, the high gloves, right? Because high gloves or tattoos that emphasize all the muscles in here are usually considered like very sexy. I mean, of course, all of this stuff is super open to your personal taste. But, but I'm talking about what I find is more usual for big audiences and stuff like that. Because I know, for example, I have a friend, and she really likes the super small, tiny guys in all the series and such. And But when you do fan service of those, it's kind of extremely risky because uh, they can look like children. So I never recommend doing these sort of outfits and stuff with people that look like children. That's kind of awkward. So I'm only going to be talking about more adult people, OK? <laughs> OK, yeah, so with stuff like that, if this was a woman, we could very easily go towards dresses that go all the way down here. <laughs> She's just smiling. <laughs> and of course, another thing, I always recommend looking at uh, female designs and taking stuff from there. Because like every single piece of clothing for females has already been fetishized so much. And we can actually take it uh, to the male territory and make it work for the guys as well which is always really fun to see how it works in exactly the same in, in both genres. And so, for example, you know the typical chokers that are super usual anywhere? You can add those, and they will always work as well. Like, I'm just saying super random stuff in here, OK? Don't judge me. <laughs> OK. So yeah, the back is super easy to work with. You just can go to any online shopping stores and check the backs of dresses and say, I'm going to make my guy wear this. As for the front, it's super easy to emphasize anything as well. 
So like, excuse my super fast doodles. I, I hope you can understand them. OK, so we've got a lot of stuff going on in the front. And usually, one of the most uh, obvious everywhere, like no matter what clothes you give your guy, are the clavicles. I think, I think they are called clavicles in English. Now I'm confused. But like all this area here, like we talked about uh, a second ago, it doesn't need to be a perfect square with no curves anywhere, OK? So it's always fun to, to play with these shapes and to give them more uh, curved. That will always make uh, any sketch you make more organic. Okay, so what I usually do is I really mark uh, where the pegs are going to fall. And from there, I, you can easily move towards any single kind of um, body type you want. Because you just, with this, you are easily telling yourself where the bone structure is going to be. And then you can build from there. OK. So I usually mark the middle, because guys usually have like the super prominent abs when you draw them. And it needs to be exactly in the middle, which is usually a pain, but also really useful for anatomy practice drawings. And so from here, it's where the fun begins. And you can like detail them more, detail them less, make them be more muscly, be, them be more lean. Um, I placed the head really bad in there. I'm sorry. OK, so usually. I will just erase. I have a very messy way of sketching. I hope it's OK. Like, what I usually do is from the pegs. Yeah, I, I'm going to keep adding arrows as I go. From the pegs and such, I add how bulky I want him to be up here, for example. Like, I just added a, a more of a triangle shape up there on this part. And then I usually uh, very lightly detail where the apps and the whole fun part is going to fall. And yeah, there's so many styles of working with this, so this is definitely not the only way to go around it. But I usually detail the upper parts more and then leave the others like less defined, because that's um, how I personally like drawing it. And you can emphasize all these parts so much uh, with crop tops and stuff like that, but it's usually not so well accepted. So if, if you want to go for it, then sure. But yeah, I guess in companies and such, it won't be too allowed, which is a shame, <laughs> if you ask me. But we can go back to the arms, which is always the safest part to emphasize for anything. The arms, you can make them be super powerful. And like usually, detailing the hands is super appreciated. Because you know the whole joke with the jaoi hands thing, where they are super detailed, but the rest of the pictures aren't really detailed at all. So I guess that's something that works very easily when you're drawing uh, male figures like this. And as for the outfits, once again, we can emphasize all of this in such easy ways. But unless you have a specific outfit, I mean, unless you have a specific questions about outfit design that I can answer, I'm probably going to move more to uh, tips on the poses. So OK, let's move on to that then. OK, so taking into account the, the parts that are easier to emphasize, which would be, like we said, um, the arms overall, because it's so easy to add them anywhere. Uh, for poses, uh, the most important thing you can actually do is to try to not make them stiff at all. So what I usually, when I was beginning, now I have a more of an automatic process, but what I usually did when I began was marking either this line right here, which helps you define the whole curvature of the back real fast, and now um, from this line, you know where the half of the head is going to fall. You know where this is going to fall as well. And you know where the rest is kind of going to go. And you can work on this line in many different ways. Like, if you do like this, 
it's going to work for so many different poses. The arms could be right here, and he could be in this sort of perspective. Or with the same line in mind, it could work in another perspective, right? So you've got lots of ways to, of working with just one line that's going to mark a very specific part you want to usually emphasize when you're drawing guys. And actually, the same goes for this other line here, because it marks a lot of stuff as well. Usually, when I begin with the front part, I will also detail where this is falling, because it's going to define so many details in here that are really not hard to get right, but you usually have a specific, uh, specific pose in mind, so you want to get it down as fast as possible. And I'm, I'm talking mainly aiming at really fast pose doodles for concepts and such. So let's make some examples. If you have some pose you, ha you want to propose or stuff like that, that would be really fun. So just tell, tell her over there, and she will give you the mic. <laughs> but for example, uh, you don't get to see many in splash art, for example, and promotional illustrations. You don't get to see many guys uh, lying on the floor, like doing this sort of super posy stuff, right? But we are super used to seeing it in Turel, so we're going to work on one of those. So usually those sort of poses. Uh, can you see the orange from there? Yeah? OK. Usually those sort of poses, uh, they are really easy to reference from magazine covers, right? So please check lots of magazines. It's always fun to imagine them in, the, in, in a guy and such. With all the armor you want and all those things, just think of fun art and it will come so naturally. OK, so like I said, I usually begin with the middle line for absolutely everything. So. And like I said, I'm not going to even think about this much. I'm just going to make a super curvy line, like, uh, I don't know, something like this. Usually want it to have an S shape either way. Otherwise, it's going to look kind of stiff. So for example, something like this would be a starting point. And now from here, uh, what I usually do is I emphasize the, where the shoulders are going to fall, because that's going to define uh, when you begin studying how all these muscles around here work, it gives you headaches, OK? <laughs> and that's going to define where uh, the neck parts go, for example, which are always really important. And from there, you're going to know how the rest is affected. So for example, something uh, it could go something like this. Yeah, we're going to super magazine kind of cover. <laughs> right. And yeah, you never get to see this sort of poses, so I really encourage trying to practice them. Because if you do something like this, like I said, uh, the most important part of making fan service is not the actual outfit so much as what, po what you make them pose in. And the more ridiculous it is, the more fun service it usually is, which is super silly, but also super fun to, to try. And for example, something we usually see is one leg lifted. So maybe in this pose, it could be something like this. Right? <laughs> so this is like a super flawless sort of pose. Yes, he's definitely posing for a bikini ad. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, like I always think when I see when I see titles and such, like you could get any sort of female character posing as this in a promotional poster and such, and it wouldn't even be weird because you would like sort of add flowers around here or stuff like that, and it would be like. OK, it's another normal picture, but you never see people really drawing this for guys. And it's like, why not? We want to have fun as well. So yeah, I'm making this super exaggerated. <laughs> OK. And we can dress this in any single outfit. Like, we could give him a suit. A suit. Uh, we could give him anything. 
and and yeah. Wait. Let me add another one here. So the poses that are uh, kind of lying down or how could I say? Um, you know the super typical pose where you're sort of like sitting and doing like this with a glass of wine in your hand or those sort of things? Uh, you can see them a lot more lately in, like I said, games like Fade Go, which is, which is definitely fun to see for a change. And I usually work in all those things in the exact same way. Like, I usually begin with the head because I find the expression is always really important as well. I feel like I'm not too good with the expressions myself, so I want to focus more on the anatomy aspect, but... Like, once again, we go to the curve thing, and we are just going to go, like, swoosh over here. <laughs> You're making a weird face, but it's going to turn into something. <laughs> Okay, it's just so that we remember we're going to make him sort of like be like this, okay? <laughs> and yeah, from here we're going to. Oh, okay, something important which I just made with this is usually when you're posing your character, even if it's for the most normal of poses, if you want to make it look dynamic, you don't want to make him stand or hair. I mean, I don't care. This works for any single sort of fast sketch. You don't want to make them stand like this. No matter how good the outfit is, it's going to look boring as hell if the pose is bad. So before you get onwards with the fancy with the fancy parts of outfits, you really want to spice things up a bit from the base, which would be um, the, the bone structure and the pose itself. So this is going to be like a thousand uh, beginner uh, beginner problems when you see, I want to become a character artist and all the poses are the same. So something extremely simple that you can incorporate from the first second, and this might be very basic to some of you, I'm, I'm sorry if there's more experienced artists here, um, is you want, for example, to make the face look here, but you make uh, the shoulders look the other way. Uh, you make the shoulders look the other way. And this will never be parallel to this line here. So if this line here is like this, you usually want to, to curve this here. You'll see how it works. If we fill this here with the basic uh, muscle structure on top, it's the boring pose. I mean, it can work if it's a very plain character, but usually it's like, is he saying anything? about himself like that? He isn't, right? So, eh. You always want to say stuff with the poses. Always, always, always. It's super important. Well, like, this guy here is <laughs> super flashy. Okay, so the moment you make this have different angles, you can have a lot more fun with it. Like, now we are talking. Uh, the weight on the legs, okay, it's not the same to stand like, like this, like, I don't know how to pose at all. And if you stand something like this or those sort of things, and I am extremely bad at posing myself, but <laughs> I guess I can explain about it in drawing. So the weight in those legs there is falling on the same plane. It's, that's why it's boring. But when you go like this, you can see the hips are more fun to look at, for example. And in this case, just this really little uh, shift of weight between one leg and the other, it's so much fun. He looks like, in this case, he could be, or her, or whatever, uh, they could be uh, really shy, like something like this, and it keeps a character, like you can already say something about them. Or we can also go back real quick and go the complete opposite way, like, this is a confident character now, and he's daring you to whatever. Well, with this, 
no matter where you place the arms and the rest of the expression, it's going to be a lot more flat. Like, probably it would work for a super uh, serious character that doesn't even care about showing their own personality that much. But I really recommend going with opposite ways, always. Like, always like this or the other way. It could be instead of locking the hips that way, uh, we could go with this. And he could be hunching a bit. Like maybe putting uh, the arms on his pockets here, for example. And that's already saying more to the character. So yeah, back to the fun service part. <laughs> I'm going to make a new one. Um, yeah. So we were working with the weird line that you laughed about. <laughs> so OK, back to that uh, pose right there. OK, so we did the screwly thing. <laughs> and yeah, I usually place the nose real fast, like, you know, the really simple Pokemon-like nose like that. That's OK for this cat, and you can detail and cry later on. But it's just so that you know um, where he's looking from, if he has a lower angle or not. It really helps to settle kind of the expression we're going for real fast. OK, so from this line, um, you could go something like this for the shoulders. And I was saying different angles for the shoulders and the hips. So we are not only going different angles here, but we're going different uh, perspective. So if you want to make this match, it, it's going to be like a sort of ribbon form. It's going to be something like this, where this would be the legs, right? OK, try to think of it as a sort of block. I think it always helps. And then this would be the middle part I mentioned before, this one right here. <laughs> and so another thing you also want to always try to emphasize is the volume in the muscles, which if we are working on poses like the one on the left, we are more used to it because it's just like the shape. And so many people and character designers are used to working uh, with just shapes or like laying out the basic silhouette of everything. But when you need to work with more perspective, it's usually kind of confusing. But you just want to make everything look a little bit fluffy, right? Like you can kind of grab it. <laughs> this sounds so wrong. <laughs> OK. So for example, yeah, you can just scribble the apps or something like this anymore, because it, it's not going to work in perspective. So now you need to add uh, <laughs> the funny thing is that when I draw this, I always think of that really funny image of a bread bun that looks like apps, and everyone jokes about it online. So I always think of bread when I'm dropping abs and it's really ridiculous, but it works for me, so. <laughs> okay, and the thing is, I laid down this uh, rectangle here because you need to know where the legs are coming from. Uh, you can't just look, do like this, and it can kind of work, but it's better if you know uh, where exactly the, the shapes are going to fall. Because if you want to, for example, add flowy, um, flowy capes or stuff that's falling or going from one leg to the other, you want to be able to join those well. So uh, you usually mark the middle because it's, it's there. And I usually draw like two circles where the legs would come from, right? And that way, you can, if you think of it as just um, cylinders, it helps a lot. But later on, I really recommend to not think of them as simple shapes like this, because it really takes from the fun of adding all the muscle groups and all those things. It's just to explain how I think of the perspective of each pose. But for example, the knee area is always really problematic, because you're like, uh, the, the, the knee is, right, is supposed to be a circle, right? So how does this join? This is not a, a wood doll. So that's why I say, do not think of them as such simple shapes and try to just uh, not wing it, but learn the muscles themselves. Because if you draw a circle here and pretend to, let me do that in another color, if you turn this into this, 
which is what's usually taught everywhere, and you do like this, like the wooden dolls, you're like, eh? What? How do I join that? <laughs> like, you could go on in so many different ways. Like, do I do that or do I make it more round? And does it fold here or does it fold here? So, try it to do those things unless you're thinking about really complex uh, perspectives and you really don't know where to place anything because this is this turns out to be a, a little bit messy. So for example, then it would go something like this instead of a circle and these are very important things. <laughs> okay. And like usually this part here, I mean the legs it's going to be covered by the usual long pants that we are usually forced to draw for every single male character design. So, like I was saying, uh, we are going to focus on the fun part on the top. And uh, I don't know, should he be holding a glass of wine or <laughs> just chilling? I don't know. So, yeah, this is the bread, okay. When you shade it, you think of bread ones, and it's super easy. Because you make it look fluffy thinking of bread, OK? I'm sorry for my weird ways. <laughs> we are going to clean this a bit, because I'm sure if someone were to say this right now, they would be very confused. OK. And for example, uh, let's erase all of this as well. I think it's from here, uh, like I was saying, if we were, I mean, the pose is already kind of on service by itself. But if we went to add, whoops, an outfit here, it could be really simple um, to make it shine, kind of, for example. If we were to use a, a design with a long skirt, this would be a pose that would work real well to show all the important parts that you usually want to emphasize with a, a skirt, right? Because you could like, um, okay, let's work with those typical skirts that are like from the front, and they they have like two pieces in the back. Like they are really usual in in females, <laughs> not so much in males, but they are really cool. Okay, you know the shape, I think. And that way you can like have a lot of fun because you can uh, make stuff lie down here, and then it can kind of open on the side, right? And then you can show lots of stuff that are aren't really shown in male designs. We are going to add pants for the sake of keeping this uh, panel safe for work. So. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to go with something like this. He's totally wearing pants below the skirt. Do it for the children. <laughs> and yeah, it can open and stuff like that. I swear I draw more stuff that's not fan service, but since I'm supposed to be talking about this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and maybe to make. Um, Let's give him some high heels as well while we are at edit, because we can do it here. OK. Super high heels. I'm going to tilt that a bit. He's too professional. <laughs> and something that usually works as well, which is another really simple tip is to tilt the head a little bit because it looks like more personal, like he has more character to him. Like So instead of making it look straight like this, which is kind of plain, you usually want to like make him look a bit more to the side. These are tricks you see all the time applied to female art. So. Because when you're tilting your head a little bit, you can make like the hair uh, fall on one side, for example, and that 
that's usually what you want to see, I suppose. <laughs> Let's make him tilt it more. Or it can work this way or the other way, actually, because this way he's more like, I'm chilling here, and this way he's more like, I'm posing here. So those are kind of different ways of making it. Uh, that way you can, yeah, like, sort of, if he had long hair, for example, or hair accessories, you could make those fall either way. And you could even like do something like this, and it would be super, super uh, magazine-like. But this, for example, it looks really stiff. I'm gonna sit down. If you have any suggestions or you are like, why don't you draw this sort of pose and stuff? This would be really fun to make uh, more interactive with you all. And remember, he's wearing pants. <laughs> so, um, from this point on, because we've talked a bit about everything, uh, would you like me to talk more about more anatomy aspects or more character design aspects, not necessarily aimed at fan service stuff, but maybe you're interested in seeing it? Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay. The microphone doesn't want to work. Two, three. Okay. So one question. Yes. Oops. When you are creating uh, some kind of character or making a character design, okay. do you always uh, prefer to make a character with anime, ha anime hairstyle or normal ha hairstyle? Huh. Um, well, because I'm so much into anime, I really like it anime uh, hairstyles, but I don't like making them too crazy because I usually, since I enjoy designing fashion so much, I usually try to make the fashion aspect uh, shine more. Um, I usually, yeah, I usually try to focus more on the rest of the outfit rather than the hairstyle because, like, when I think of the characters doing their hair every morning, it's kind of crazy for me to think they would make those huge spikes every single day in the mirror, so I, unless I get asked for a really flashy style, I do not really incorporate it in my own designs when, when I can avoid it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Um, would you like me to focus more on more anatomy tips and stuff like that, or character design? No preference? <laughs> huh? Anatomy? Okay. Ah. <laughs> I heard it from here. It's okay. Okay. So let's go with anatomy then. <laughs> okay, so let me check. Oh, it's been one hour. Um, well, uh, so apparently, if you participate in panels and such, you get, can get points for your house of your of the color of your bracelet. So, if you want, what we can do is, if you propose a pose and such, maybe you can get points. If that's okay. So we can talk about anatomy tips uh, for a little bit, uh, maybe 10 minutes, 10 minutes or so. Yes. And you can propose poses or outfit ideas and stuff, and we can work on them live here. And you can get a uh, point for your house, <laughs> if you would like. 
So if, if anyone wants to get points, you can suggest uh, poses and stuff. And if not, I will just work on random stuff. <laughs> okay. None of you want points for your houses you could win? <laughs> Is it work? Yeah, okay. Um, I'm talking for my friend here yeah. because he's kind of shy. Oh, it's okay. uh, but he would really like some pose, like lying on your stomach, mm -hmm. if it's possible. A, a pose on. on... A, a, a lying like down on your stomach. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I, yeah sure. It's, uh, if it's not too difficult. No, no, that's okay. We can talk about many things with those sort of pose. So, I guess, points <laughs> for the good suggestion. Okay, so uh, actually, yes, that sort of pose usually gives trouble because you need to work with all these muscles here and it's like, oh no, <laughs> but it's a good challenge. So like I said, uh, if I were to make a pose like that, first thing I would do is tilt the head because it's usually like kind of intimate pose, right? Like you don't really see someone like that on the floor randomly. It usually means you, you have to go up close or like take a picture super close to them. So first thing I would do is like tilt the head. You're usually going to work with a perspective like kind of like this. So we do the, the Pokemon sort of nose, which is always my go-to for sketches. And when the muscles are like this, it's always a huge mess. But I'm going to try my best here live without messing up too much. Okay, so the first thing I would do would be to set up uh, this sort of shape. That this part over here, when you look at it from above, it has. So this would be the head, right, from above. And you kind of have this shape. And everything goes on from there. So I would try to uh, lay that down first so that I know at what angle he's going to be standing at. I hope this is the pose you're referring to. <laughs> And the second thing would be uh, the clavicle, yes. <laughs> because it's not going to be like we usually see it like this. Since it's going to be like this, it's going to go forward more. And it has this sort of shape from above. above. Like I said, in this pose, something that's going to be super emphasized is uh, the volume of the pecs and this muscle right here. So I usually try to lay those first. Even though the sketch looks really bad, this is what you usually get to detail later on. OK, so something like this. I can make it cleaner in a bit. Like, for example, I've realized I'm not making him um, so lean for now, so I'm going to correct that real quick. by making this area a little bit clo closer to the ground and to where the arms are. OK, and now he's kind of standing in here. We're going to mark this with this. It's always kind of hard to find uh, the balance be um, between making the pecs uh, fluffy, like I said before, and not make them look like boobs, because that's very tricky. <laughs> OK, so like I said, it's very important to not think with circles and cylinders, because otherwise you're going to miss so much information on the muscles you're drawing. So for example, in here, uh, you can see the first part of the sketch, which is only laying down this part. But then when you get to detail them, it's going to look much simpler, like something like this. And for the rest of the body, we could go on a more to the side pose or like sort of more perspective, depending on where we go from here. Because uh, let's take into account uh, everything comes up from here. And this could go all the way to here. And so you would be the, the typical pose that you get in many summer episodes. And it could go all the way back there. Or we could go to the side like this. 
So it all depends on the perspective you want to go for. I'm, I'm going to go for the one back here because it's used. I don't know. It's what came to mind. The summer episode thing. Did you have something like that in mind when you refer to the post? <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, I guess the, the most important parts of something, something like this would definitely be the, the clavicle and how you turn the arms inward. Hmm. And does anyone have another suggestion for another random pose? Did you? Yes. Ah. So I would like to see a pose lying on their side with a uh, supported head, but well, in some like uh, <laughs> bikini armor. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Let me make this smaller real quick. So let's try that one. So, because she was so specific about laying on, on the arm, I would uh, first begin with that thing, because you usually want to, like, if you have instructions for a pose, uh, you usually want to. <laughs> but that would be cheating for me, because I'm supposed to be talking about anatomy and such from, from memory. <laughs> but thank you. So, since the first thing to mark is the arm, I would make a uh, head tilt here and mark the arm angle kind of right away. So from here, I mark uh, the same part that we are going to have into account. And probably like this sort of pose for the hand, if it's OK. And then we kind of go from there. Because with this, we have uh, the head size, which is going to define the arm size and such. And so this is kind of a comfortable pose to draw. Uh, because here we can easily make the S curve that we talked about before, like this, even, or it could go more plain. But for example, here I can mark very easily the perspective that there's going to be in this area and in this area as well. Something like this, for example. And since we can mark it so easily, and you can see the whole abs line, we can go from there. Yeah, you can mark the line there to be like, yay, this, this part is fluffy. <laughs> and I usually mark this sort of triangle that you get. Like, uh, if we were to super simplify this, like so, OK? Instead of just drawing each app individually, which is kind of tiring, I just do like this. Like, it almost looks like some sort of swimsuit. But that way, I know where everything is going to fall really easily. OK, something like that. <laughs> if anyone has another suggestion, but we're kind of running out of time. So oh. maybe the last one? Yeah, OK, this will be the last one then. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would really like to see like posts of person falling, like uh -huh. uh, with uh, his arms and legs in the air, like... Oh, like sort of like this or something? Yeah, like, yeah. OK. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, I hope I'm getting what you mean. <laughs> So you said falling with your arms in the air. 
so again, since you were specific about that part, um, I would probably, when you do like that, you always need to mark this very well. So maybe he could have like a higher angle on the face or something like that, so that this part here is more emphasized. Because if you make him look down, you aren't going to be able to show this part so much. So I think it's more fun to make uh, to make a pose that shows it. Okay, so first of all, oh, I'm I'm drawing it very small. I'm sorry. <laughs> this part here, like I always emphasize that first. And. Okay. Yeah. So when you stretch this part here, it will look very different from what we are usually told to draw. So you need to take that into account. Something like this. Maybe so that it looks more like he's actually falling, we could tilt it a little bit. Something? Is it along those lines? Is it along those lines? OK. And to make him look like he's actually falling, uh, what I usually just do is uh, tilt uh, the feet so that he's not landing anywhere. And. Uh, well, this leg could go, could go in many places. It could be something like this. Or like if he was more jumping, maybe I would go somewhere like that. Or Yeah, he looks like he's having fun now. <laughs> like, woo -hoo. And yeah, the arms could be even more raised. But I, I figured something like this sort of pose. Yeah, this is really fun because it's usually really easy to make this sort of thing since it's very similar to what we are used to drawing. So I guess it's a nice point to stop unless you have any last minute questions or something. But if you need anything, I will be in the artist alley still. So if, if you want to talk about anything there or are camera shy, you can go there. And I will be super glad to talk to any of you. So. Yeah, he's super happy, so he's like, thank you for coming to the, to the speech right now. <laughs> thank you all so much.